Oh, yeah, another cool morning. 25th of March. And our spring has been going backwards. As you see, I'm walking on frozen winter packed snow. As you can see, we've had some pretty good melting going on a couple of weeks ago. Then the temperature dropped and we haven't been above freezing for a daytime high in well over a week. So all that melting turned to ice, which I'll show you in a minute. It's turned big areas of my yard into a skating rink like this here. Pure ice all the way to the Quonset, out east of the Quonset, south side of the yard, same deal. So not great. Anyway, it's got to warm up one of these days, 25th of March already. What I'm looking at today, I can work with bare hands for a little while. I think the temperature's in the teens Fahrenheit today. A subject recently came up on the Flat Spot Facebook group regarding these uh, Holly 1901 carburetors as found on the 52-53 Mercury's. Apparently these two choke butterflies can be installed backwards and that'll cause uh, I guess various performance problems so we were wondering if that might be what's going on on the 52 Merc. This is my spare manifold and carburetor from the 53 non-running Mercury. Let's hang on a minute while I get the door open. Okay, if I've got enough hands to work here. A little trouble light. This is the carburetor currently on the car. There's a choke. This was automatic choke originally, but converted to manual control. You'll notice that little, the butterflies had a kind of a flat edge on the top side on the other carburetor. So they're both installed the same. So either they're both right or they're both wrong. I know this one's been a part within the past decade for a repair kit installation. The spare parts carburetor, I have no history on that. It could be all original or it may have been a part half a dozen times. So I'm going to consult the online uh, repair manual for this Holly two barrel. Sometimes known as the Towering Inferno or the teapot carburetor. They were kind of unique. They had the float bowl sitting way up here. Unlike a conventional two barrel carburetor. I know carburetors are kind of old news for the younger generation, but that's what I grew up with. On another slightly related subject, this is my six volt timing light for six volt only use a three amp fuse now I checked and it does have the three amp fuse right there appears to be intact now, I've never used one of these before so wiring's not the greatest so I'm assuming we just hook up these two cables clips to the uh, battery in the car and this one down here I believe attaches to number one spark plug and then you run it at idle pointing the, the light down at the timing mark I guess I'll have to show you that if we can actually see it. Oh yeah, not the greatest. I can see it, but I can't reach it. See that pointer down there? That is the indicator for the timing. And somewhere on this pulley, good luck trying to see it. Somewhere 
I'm assuming on the back of that pulley there's going to be a timing mark to indicate either top dead center or a few degrees one side or the other. But anyway, I'll have to watch a video on that and see if how it's done. Another thing I'm not too sure of, being a positive ground car, am I going to hook up the timing light backwards? Oh, great, we got a cat in here. All right, we got a pause here. In other news, well, there's not much news. I parked this grain auger here probably two weeks ago in uh, with plans of modifying that hitch. I gotta cut that off so it's not sticking out in the way when it goes into the bin. Cut it off and modify it to something like this Secundiac has. But it's been too cold and uh, I've had another project, welding project going on here. Yeah, don't look too close, it's pretty crude. Anyway, that's about enough for today. I got a little bit of drone video to add on from yesterday. I'll finish it off with that. And if you've hung in there this long, uh, don't see any crows out there yet. They should be here by the 20th of March. It's a sign of spring. The cobra chickens have arrived. There's none in the yard this morning, but there was some honking at me the other day. So that's it. We're going to call it a day. Call it a video anyway. The day is just beginning for me. So stay tuned for the next one from the Roosty Six channel. Well, I am just going to throw in my two cents worth of commentary on here. On this bit of drone video. I see I got about a good three minutes of it to go so it's uh the day before march 24th a little bit of flying out west of the yard looking down on the cattle looking down on the field you can see quite the pattern of snow drifts from the last time it blew it looks like a lot of snow but it's really a very thin layer i've got a picture in this field i think it was taken last year on this date and I was pushing deep trenches through it to make a trail to get to the cattle feeder with a dozer blade. So we're definitely in a snow deficit. There's some of the cattle heading out from the barn area to the west feeder. This guy's on the run. They're still a little bit nervous in the drone. There's a cultivator sitting there. Pretty much buried in snow right up to the frame so yeah there's some deep drifts here and there but generally out in the field it's pretty shallow i guess it's part of the continuing drought we're in here there's already some concerns being voiced about the oncoming growing season we may not get enough to grow a crop but i guess nobody knows eh there's another view of the cattle relaxing in the sun there. We get pretty good protection from most wind directions there. Good stand of natural trees on the north side. And to the east is the big uh, shelter belt we planted many years ago. Chinese elm. A little bit of spruce in there. The spruce is gradually dying out. So I had to do a fair bit of editing in this video. The drone still has its issues with the camera, the stabilizer. Every now and then it just goes and gets the shakes. So I try to cut that out and just show the clear and undamaged segments here. The old pasture is showing a bit of snow cover and old grass coming through. Surprisingly, there is some water showing up from the snow melt because two weeks ago here we had some pretty good melting conditions. And I was kind of surprised to see how much water actually showed up. Anyway, we're getting to the end of the tape here, so I better shut her down and uh, see you next time on the Roosty Six channel.